controller. a dog delay. John. I'm getting excited about the ABCs tonight, folks. I don't usually get excited about the ABCs. I see you making notes, John. That's not fair. Well, if I don't, I don't want to look like a total douche. And I know there's a lot of good bands that I need to have. Well, we... <laughs> Would you say total douche? Doof. Yeah. Well, by the time, even if we have notes, by the time we get to after T, we're screwed. Yeah, oh yeah, that's it. And I'm, XYZ is open, but now that I'll just I'll come to that in the middle a little bit. Um, oh, never mind. Open, man. XYZ, X Y and the Z. Oh, hey, welcome to welcome to coming back for what you call um what you call what you call the show we do when we do the show. This is the show, the Phil and John Zone, January nineteenth, Thursday, Thursday, folks. Go figure. Schedules have been changed. Things have happened. We now will meet whenever we can, so you just have to keep your eyes open. You'll see me post during the afternoon, yes. and then it'll happen. That's it. That's all your – even the guests only get that much of a, of a warning. In fact, tonight, we gave the guests no warning because there's no guests <laughs> so far. <laughs> now, during the show, if you decide you can be a guest or you want to be a guest, you're always welcome to be on the Phil and John Zone. We love bringing in people right off the, right off the street, but we're not on the street tonight, so we have to do it live. So, anyway, show 142 – I think I'd be excited about the 142, you know, got all one on there. You know. Yeah, I, yeah, I was. I should have done. That'd have been a good. Uh, that would have been a good starter sign. Tattoo a little one on there. And... Yeah, you gotta go out. It's all right. Dogs are gonna bark. It's, it's that time of the day. That's yeah, what, I think they start the show every week with a couple barks. Yeah, my dog wants to go out right now. So. Hey, your dog wants to go out. Yeah, he's right here, but I'm upstairs. So hold on. Weird. Okay. Skylar King. No, you didn't get it. Give me just a second. Very good. It's a uh, dog Thursday. It's dog Thursday. Yep, definitely dog Thursday. No, it's Phil and John's dog Thursday. One forty-two. Good to see you, John. You too, friend. You too. Um, yeah. So, what, what, what's going on, man? It's Thursday. I, Thursday. It's Nothing. weird. I, I'm throwing really off. Like... I'm throwing off. This is throwing my whole thing off. Last week was the longest week I've ever had in like three years. <laughs> the last two weeks have been longest. Week. I don't know what day it is. Sometimes Scooby, I'm gonna bite your. Just for a um, but I, I, even though we haven't really done zone on Fridays, I get to hook up with my friend John, and we get to hang out for the last two weeks. Um, five hours. Listening our videos and it was a beautiful thing. So, um, can, sorry, I'm uh, taking notes to, on, on you his can performance join the club for a dollar ninety nine per hour, and I guarantee it's better than the Phil. <laughs> I was having this feeling earlier that I kind of wish that we got paid for this. <laughs> Not that I don't yeah. enjoy doing it, folks. I love you doing the show. I love the whole, whole thing we do. For me, it, it, rain, it, it, rain. It's the therapy Lay down. to release. Lay down. Just to go. We get both our dogs are just growling. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have changed the lighting. It, here. It's like, um, oh, it's just better. Uh, talking. 
Uh, we're still getting set up, folks. We're still unfinish, un unofficially official. Uh, there's a Tom Dean checking in. Hey, Tommy Dean, what's up, buddy? How are you tonight? Hey, Tommy Dean. Looks like you got a new job at a, um, some cool place where they look at dogs. We watch yeah, dogs. That looks that. awesome, actually. I really like that uh, thing you did on the subway in Chicago. That was pretty cool. I saw that right through that. That was pretty dope. Was it a piece of art? Chicago, did? which I grew up in Chicago, uh, like the... Uh, Tom, you want to come on the elevated show? Elevated trains. Elevated dollars? trains. No juggling or bongos. I see you can juggle bongos if you want to, but yes, Tom I was just going to say that too. He can do whatever. If you want to come on the show and show us some hey, of your Tom. new artwork, that'd be kind of cool to do here in a little bit once, yeah, we, get, once we get the show off the road here. I'll send the link anyway. He can make a decision. I've been sleeping too much lately, folks. Been sleeping, in the, sleeping in the morning. Been trying to take a nap in the afternoon, and I and today I forced myself to lay down for just a minute, but I did not nap. I just kind of laid there, you know, and I, I I laid there and I said, "Get up, get to work. It's time for the zone." And my motivation changed all in like 100, 150 degrees, whatever they call it, 180 degrees. And I'm here doing the show, so it feels good. Too much sleep this time of year. The gloomy weather, the clouds, the lack of sunshine. It just makes me want to hibernate. I think bears got it right, man. The bears, they got it right. Yeah, the uh, lack of sunshine uh, is freaky. And I've been painting. I mean, I guess that's good. You've been watching the, the, new, the new paintings coming out. I got a new gig at an employment um, to get paid a paycheck uh, by some company. So I've been, my schedule's off whack. But uh, speaking of sunshine, we'll go off uh, subject of work. Um, I like listening to, I like watching Do uh, El Chapo. In six what? years in camp. What? Go ahead. That's not the tattoo artist, though. No, 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 no. Uh, the Colombian. Uh, Menin uh, Cartel, uh, who's in custody in the United States. His son just got captured. He's got like, get, he's in solitary confinement, but he's seen sunshine like 10 times in six years. That is not right, man. No, that's not, he can't that be doing That is good. not we right. We want him to be doing even, great. Listen. But. Even being inside all the time, even though you can see, oh, it feels so good, man. It's so good. <laughs> When the sun does shine, I go outside right away. I make sure to spend as much time out there as I can. I think that's the only, the only thing you can do. Um, I'm sitting upstairs uh, for the second week, I do believe. Up in the uh, studio is full of... Uh, sorry, uh, Christmas decorations are up for a reason, I guess. We Even out front. Like every, we have a family Christmas party that Laura and her family have uh, in the middle of January. And it's this weekend on Saturday. So we have our Christmas tree up, lighting and decorations up front and everything is, so that's why we have it up and it's a cool thing. And for Christmas uh, holiday party, I'm doing all Mexican. Carne asadas, roll-ups, tortillas. I want to come to your house for, for the party. That sounds delicious. Most delicious there. I'm cooking a big kettle pot of neck bones and all sort of research, but uh, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Now, Tom Dean, I see you, dog, Doggy Daycare, he says he's doing right now, which is pretty cool. Yeah, um, sure that, yeah. Honestly, that sounds like an ideal cool job right there. If you're going to go out and work and do something, you can go yeah. watch other people's dogs, as long as they're nice people, you know. Darren, Darren's watching. Hey, Darren, how's the bubbles, buddy? Good to see you on there, man. Hey, Darren. I was looking for guests. I did talk to, to I talked to Don Black very briefly, and he said that he was um, looking forward to a good summer. So I'm guessing that means Blue Ox, but I'm not sure. We'll find out the details as time goes by. It's my envy guy. I won't bring up the first. You envy him? Do you envy him? <laughs> no, not really. Yeah, no. I don't envy it. Hey, Darren. Mindy's watching now, too. Mindy Hahn. Hey, guys. I'm just going to say hi. Just come hey, in. Sheila Jones Whitaker, one of our favorite people in the world out there watching. Hi, Sheila. I miss really you. Gonna, um... I want to thank you, you know. You know, I, I don't see. Thank you, Miss Sheila, for that kit you uh, got me and John at um, John Summer Solstice. That little black box with all that stuff. It comes in handy. It's a beautiful thing. I want to say thank you. Thank I you. I haven't gone. I haven't gone any place without it yet. Since I've been traveling, since I got it, it's been in the car the whole time. It's still in the car right now. Even all my stuff. Oh, I split you. it up, and yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It, it oh. just all the stuff for my events is gone, but that that box is still in there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, in any in other words, hi hey. Darren. Yeah, you said I'm maybe see a snowshoe. Well, we're gonna see about a snowshoe. If I can get Amy to go to see Cluster Pluck with me next weekend, it might be a snowshoe. But if she doesn't go next weekend, then we're gonna go to Cluster Pluck that night. Long yeah, um, snowshoe. I was hoping John and Amy or John or anybody. Uh...
uh, Snowshoe is in uh, Aurora at the Roundhouse, February second week. I forgot the date. Uh, Mr. Blotto and uh, Old Shoe. Excuse me. And I guess right I'm sure a um, few blocks from my house. And uh, I will bending, be vending some artwork. And hopefully my buddy John Griffin can be there too. Unless he has a previous engagement. But uh, please come by. It's going to be <laughs> epic. And it's going to sell out. If you've been to the Roundhouse, it is yeah, right on. Show them the event page. Show them the event article here. The share this real quick for just a second while we're talking about it, so they know where the, where, where it's at. Get the information, folks. We want to we want to start something here where we have a a show where people are informed. People know where to go and do and see the music, and um, yep. that's one of the good ones coming up, man. That's one of the good. You ones. You know, um, two of the bands playing there, Old Shoe and Mister Blotto. I know every guy, every person in the band, and they're just great people. Before that happens. There's another one coming up that I'm going to be doing this weekend in Peoria to raise some money for our friend Leona and Troy. And that's this one, a benefit for Leona and Demi. This one's pink, three-fifths of shine, which is actually four-fifths of shine now. I forgot they changed that. So four out of five of shiners are going to be there. Mace Hathaway and Friends, Ryan Kine, Stumpy Joe, Dead Man's Dog, and Dirty Mike's. So those nice lineup. Yeah. It's a $5 donation suggestion, but they're going to be raising money, so hopefully people will be giving a lot more money than the $5, it's ideally, that they can... They can try to donate a little bit into the, the, the cause. No, they haven't talked about doing, um, it says food and games throughout the event. So I don't know if they're going to do a raffle or if we're going to do, we should be doing a silent auction probably. Just try to raise money for our friend Leona who's got some medical stuff that she's been dealing with for a long time in her life. And our good friend Troy who does a lot of the videoing of everything just released the, I don't know if you got a chance to watch any of that yet, but he just he released the six hour video of my party. And it's like, uh, it's a Chicago Farmer and, and Still Shine and Jenny B and... You had a party? Everybody who played on Saturday, I guess, pretty much. And Hammer and Hatchet. I wasn't there. Where was I? Mm. Did you invite me to your party? You were there because I remember Still Shine's like, hey, where's Phil? I can't find Phil. And they're like looking at through the lights. They couldn't see you. <laughs> so, anyway, you know, but yeah, it was good, though. It's been good. It's, you know, like, pe life has been good lately, folks. I've been keeping busy with work and, and there's art going everywhere. We need to need it to go. And, so I just want to want to share that with you for just thinking about that. You know, it's um glad for you guys coming back to the show 142 times. It's going to be a little unstable for a while. It's like it, it's always been pretty unstable. Well, it's going to be forever. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, unstable forever. Yeah. No, unstable and and forever. You think we'll just yeah we'll just do it until we're older and we'll be that'd be cool. Oh, yeah. Someday we'll get a sponsorship and they'll pay us to to say Gatorade three times or something during the show or something you know but. You know, yeah, a lot of viewers for that. Sure, and you we, all, have, sure we all need and... money. Sure, we all need something, but I don't think about that stuff when we talk. It's like, I mean, you just mentioned some people. Yeah, they make me smile, and that's what it's about. And it's um, when you smile, it's worth more than money. It's your soul that's priceless. And yeah. Just to um, see people as you chime in. I don't see anybody again and again, 142 weeks. I don't see anybody who's um, writing in. So when John said Darren and Michelle. Well, I see people come on. I try to, I try to make sure people they know people that makes me there. happy that you're actually watching this. Pretty cool. There's not a lot of people watching this usually. It's usually pretty slim. I don't really care. I'm but the idea is some people are watching. <laughs> I do care. Some people are checking it out. So that we're, we, we're, it's not a cult yet. But oh, pretty cool. cool. We're all going to start wearing orange. The oh. color orange. And, um, and we're going to cult up. Right? Phil won't even see it happening. It'll happen right in front of his eyes. <laughs> I like watching uh, stuff documentaries on cults. And I, 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 I said that uh, we are in a cult. So we are. We, I don't think we have a cult following. We have a cult reaction. We're still trying to figure out who the leader is. We're though. not really a commune. What are we? We oh, are we're people friends. We are family. We're something that happens. We love me. We all love music. We all love music. Love music. Love music. Love music. So this love week, music. we want to see all those bands. You know, it's, uh, uh, we can't really explain what we do. Um, we like certain things, and it's just cool. Uh, It'd be nice if you had Thursdays off. It makes no sense what I just said. So it's a Thursday community calendar works a lot better than a Friday community calendar. Calendar. Like when we start talking about what's coming up, a lot of times we're talking about stuff that's happening like tonight because it's going to be it's Friday. But tonight, I don't know what's going on. There's a thing yeah, in the for artists, but it's not really the group I run with, so I'm not going to go to that. Yeah. Um, there's stuff coming up. A flyer, I do believe, is in town in Aurora. Um, 
Uh, Blado's playing tomorrow uh, by me. Um, um, I have um, another event next week that I'm going to called the Jamming at the Springs in Alton, Illinois, at a place called the Je Mineral Spring Mineral Mineral Springs Mall and Cultural Center. I think it's called. All right. Here's a really cool thing out by me outside of Aurora that cannot go because I have a pre previous engagement called work. Um, on Sunday at the law office, um, them Cooley boys are playing at a small little place. It might be sold out, but check it out. I was going to go, but they start four in the afternoon. And unfortunately, I can't make that time slot. So if, if you can go, go see them Cooley boys at the law office in Yorkville on Sunday at four o'clock. Nice. Yeah. And then next weekend, January 27th and 28th, let's just get these all out of the play before we do records. Well, I go all the way to 420 before we do records. Uh, is the thing I'm doing next weekend for the Mineral Springs Banquet Center in, in Alton, Illinois, which is a really nice little town around the convergence of the two rivers. As you can see in the background of the window, there's two rivers that converge there, the, the Illinois and the Mississippi. And I think the Missouri River, too. I think it might be three, a three-river convergence. It's a pretty awesome place. There's a great giant Native American painting on a cliff wall called the Piazza Bird. And it's you have to go see it sometime if you're ever in Alton because it's absolutely amazing that anybody from a couple hundred years ago could get this high on the cliff to paint something. It had to be a There's no, you know, nobody knows how it got painted there. They found it. They discovered it, you know. But um, that's going to be cool. And there's a band there called Alligator Wine playing, but it's not the band I used to be in called Alligator Wine. It's a whole different Alligator Wine. I think that name just is, it goes because of the song Mr. Charlie. Alligator Wine got used a lot. So anyway, you know, on that on that note, you know, since it's Friday. Oh, wait. God, it's going to take me forever to figure this one out. Let's, uh, let's do records. <laughs> let's get right to it. Let's get right to the punch. Five plus a bonus record tonight from each one of us. So save your bonus record out. I thought it was a break. I got to go to the bathroom. You, you said you had six, so we're going to do five plus one tonight. If you don't watch every show, then you'll think all these records are new every time you watch us because sometimes we show the same records over and over again. I, I might have showed the same tonight. one last week, but I don't care. All these, all the, well, I'm out of records. So the, for the most part, unless I go out and spend a bunch of money on records, I don't need right Or you now. come to my house. Do I get a receiver for that record player right there? I need to get a receiver. I need a, you got anybody got a receiver they're not using? I need a receiver and some speakers. Yeah, we got So you. I get a receiver, I don't need to be buying any more records. I need a stereo expert. It's an old house. We have, yeah, anyway. Do you remember a, a guy named Wolfman Jack? Oh, of course. That's why I like this record so much, man. And we've shown this before, but the American Graffiti soundtrack. Talk about an album that made music popular and amazing and fun and, and just and just cool. I mean, it was all radio back then. They were listening to the radio as they were doing their racing. And Harrison Ford and Richard Dreyfuss and all the other people that were in the movie. Um, I'm just looking at her smile and cleavage. I don't know what all you're talking about. Yeah, I like that part, part yeah. You have to like what you like, you know. I mean, it is what it is. Oh, it folds open to the whole roller skating waitress. Back in the old days, they had roller skating waitresses that brought you your burger and your root beers and yep. stuff. A&W, uh, Dog and Suds. Now we have Sonic, which is not the same. Yeah. Don't, let them, don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool... Hey. Hey. This is a word to the wise out there. I hate the, the lighting switch. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you. You won't get fooled again if you don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you. Whoever, if they're trying to be something, they're fooling you. Don't let them fool you. Okay, anyway. It's a trick. Um, this is uh, one of our favorites. Uh, Dark Mark does Christmas. We're still having a Christmas party. Like I said, we're having it on Saturday this year. It's family Dark Mark is Dark Lanigan, uh, Mark Lanigan, and uh, if you if you know, it's just a great album. And sum up in Mark Lanigan from Queens of the Stone Age and the Screaming Trees over the, over the years. Screaming Trees, yes, yes, yeah. yes, just very influential. Great and... voice, a uh, very in, in individual voice. I I feel bad because uh, I didn't really follow Queens of the Stone Age. I was I was out of the loop when they were popular. And what I was doing, I was listening to something else, or I was following the Grateful Dead or something. I missed. Queen of the Stone Age altogether. Come back to people who are really big fans of Queens of the Stone Age. And so I feel like I should have um, probably spent more time with that. But instead, I was at home listening to my Sugarloaf records. That's a great album. Does everybody need some Sugarloaf in their life? A little Green Eyed Lady? Talk about a good album. It is a good album. And um, I love it. It opens up to them in like an alleyway or an old abandoned building or something like that. And in the back, they're like psychedelic. Coming at you. Woo! 
Hey, green eyed lady, lovely lady. Uh, uh. Green uh, Captain uh, Rollins also on this. Bach Doors Man, like Bach, like, you know, Sebastian Bach. Bach Doors Man. Gotta love that. All right, we're going to go back to back Mark Lanigan. Unopened uh, some killer collection that. Uh, Black Pudding. Uh, the first song, uh, Black Pudding, if you ever heard the album, it's a rare, uh, whatever, Black Pudding. Uh, I really dig the vibe of uh, Mark Lanigan. So. Yeah. Very nice. He came out. He came out of that Seattle explosion when Seattle blew out and everybody came out of right. Seattle. The screaming trees were right there in that. They were. They weren't like they, they were. They were kind of lumped in with grunge. I think they were a little more rock and roll, but they were kind of lumped in with grunge. Um, got put on. They were on SST or no, SST records, sub pop um, records. Reggae. Um... Mom's home. Go get her. Go get her. Go get her. The dogs, we were trying to be patient with the dogs. That's part of like being stuck in the house with the dogs all day is, is, is trying at times. But I'm alive. I'm still here, folks. Still here. I'm doing all right. One of my dad's favorite records of all time. Uh, he always he, he oh, asked what his favorite song was. His favorite song was Good Lovin' when he was a kid, you know. So the Rascals, greatest hits. Uh, uh, you wouldn't be proud of the way this record's been kept. <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's got... It, it's ripped open and then the, the whole side of it's ripped open and it's falling apart and it needs to be glued and it's um it, but it's a cool like i think it's probably because it was such a an ambitious project of a record that they put out i don't think it's supposed to do that i think it's just a, just supposed to do this and then the record slid out from inside which was kind of cool so the envelope was inside of it instead of on the edge but then it decided to make its own edge by ripping the whole lot of the bottom and so the record and the record itself honestly like only reason i have it Whoa, what's that? Yeah, th th that's part of the story. That you're just going to say, what's that? Out of the tens of, <laughs> uh, so I, two, of two records fell out of it. Thousands of records that I've gone through, thousands and thousands. <laughs> what I found. In hey, you guys, leave me. So two records fell out of that sleeve. The first Fine. one is April Wine, the Nature of the Beast, incredibly <laughs> scratched up and horrible. Wine. And the second record that came out of the Rascals' Greatest Hits album is by a band called Crow, called Crow Music. So it doesn't even have the Rascals' album inside of it. It's just the sleeve I Crow. <laughs> with two random other records in it. Both of which, look, the Crow one looks pretty good. I'm going to have to listen to that one. I'm not sure if I know who Crow is. I, um, yeah, I have heard that. Look it up, no I'm date on it. Literally. No date on it. I'm not going to be looking at it until you get done. Okay, right. you're we're gonna go um, back morning. to Mark Lanigan because this is um, upstairs and this is our stereo and vinyl. A uh, Mark Lanigan, uh, I, I showed it last week. Mad season, um, double whammy. There, I, I did show that last week, didn't I? With Lane Staley, we talked. We we watched them. We watched all that stuff with Lane Staley. I know. Well, that's how big of a fan. Uh, me and John have an impromptu uh, without the Phil and John's own show. We get bored. I'm old, but he's not. But um, we sit on a Friday night because we did the zone because I had to work, and then we'll talk for and leave, and we watch videos that I have on for like five hours. It's a beautiful thing. Darren Luke's excited about your choices tonight because that's his jams. He's probably about the same age as I am, and we both came up through that music when it was real popular. Yeah. A top I mean, five album, he says, Mad Season. That My Pain is Self-Chosen. It's a, yeah. a great song. I'm going to listen to Mad Season after this is over with. Are you really? Maybe, yeah. I was talking to No Robot today because they're looking for album artwork. And I was trying to get them to use a piece yeah, of No Robot painting. I liked a lot when I saw them. Um, like, am I real? Uh, yeah, I really dug the vibe. Uh, is Alex in it? Yeah, Alex Gerard. Yeah. So that made me think. I think of album art that can be like not what it's what it is. I, I thought I was thinking of this album, well, by the Moody Blues, Blues. Days of Future Past. Yeah, because it's like it's a great album. It goes all different directions. Every every yeah. way you turn the album, there's a picture that applies to that that direction. I think that's really cool. I like some and, I, and I would like to use more of my painting art as as album cover art. I think it'd be appealing album covers just to be random and abstract and weird. You know, subliminal. They want a robot. It might have to draw a robot. We'll see. But this is this is kind of fun though. London, Fin the London Festival Orchestra conducted by Peter Knight. 
I mean, all the poetry on it, and he sings, he says a poem in between each song, and talks about the day and the night, and how it's the course of the day. It's a great album. It's a concept, but for sure, one of the early concept albums. Before the Wall, before Quadrophenia, probably I would guess Moody Blues might have been first, and they were big, man. Moody Blues were big, like bigger than most bands. Huge. huge. Yeah, they're still uh, when I hear, yeah, they're, they're fantastic. Nice yeah. and white satin is still very chilling. Ram cream, yeah. Then never get to see him. Seen uh, thousands of eclectic bands. I get to see this band. Um, this is in the last two or older. In both bands, I haven't seen. Um, friends of mine, I, I see him at Shoe Fest the last time. Is uh, Afternoon Moon. Dance in the Rain. Mm -hmm. I, they gave me one of their copies that they got given to them by the record company for listening to. So it's like a sample version of it, of that album. Of course, I also have the regular album too. That's a good one. Yeah, I love when bands. Um, I, I love when they don't just sign their name. I don't like autographs. Sure, I do, but when they do artwork too, so it looks pretty uh, dope. Yeah. Hey, Louis. Hey, uh, Jordan. Hey, we, were, uh, we were driving home from the Wood Brothers show. My brother, my my son, me, and my two friends, Jeff and Chris, and. Um, Patrick was playing jams, and then Chris asked to play a song by Janis Joplin. It's called um, "What in the World Have You Done for Me?" Or "What in the World Have You Done for Me?" I think it's what it's called, something along those lines. And 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 Jack, Patrick never really heard it, so we jammed that really loud on the way home. So I pulled out this this album here tonight, Pearl. It's a really good record, and nobody since has really been Janis. There's a lot of people that can sing and do great things, but nobody is Janis though. And she's no Mariah Carey, but. She's got her own thing that you nobody can nobody can touch. I don't think nobody yeah. can touch Janice. I think the next two uh, albums I got in the same era and same thing. So yeah. well, still got the band, be... but this is like after the after Big Brother and the Holding Company wasn't really Big Brother and the Holding you know, Company anymore. Screw the MP. Uh, screw all that stuff. We're touching vinyl. I mean, the, people have held this, and you can look at the covers and just there's something about it. I don't know. I paint on, on the, I am Phil. I paint on records. If you got one, I'm hardly paying now, so keep it. It's going to be collectible. I always leave the um, I always leave the tag on there so you can see how much it was. One dollar. That's a good thing about records. And for a while, anyway, records for a while they were going for a quarter to a dollar. Now people are starting to buy records again. They're like twenty-two to fifty dollars if you got something unsealed. And if you got something unsealed really good, it can go up to one hundred fifty, three hundred, four hundred dollars for one album. I can't do yeah, that. I buy dollar albums. I buy dollar albums or I just make my own. That's the other way you do it. Just make your own. Um, this next album, I just found something to sleep because I don't know. I get a lot. Um, band I've never seen, I always critique them going like Bruce and Bob. I had to really like it. Then I listened to them. But I guess when you see the band live, they're fantastic. It's Bob Seger uh, in Silver Bullet Band. Stranger. And I heard a song not today, a few days ago, and it just killed me. It was fantastic, and I hear nothing but good things. So it's for Bob, Bob Seger has got he's got a good following. He's got a good legacy of music. He wrote a ton of good songs, ton of good songs, very <laughs> underrated. I must he, he got a little bit on the radio, but not 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 a whole lot. The stuff he got on the radio wasn't his best material. You know, you know my no. favorite song by Bob Seger is man. Yeah. Fire there's lake, at man. least 10 songs that i would know because i'm a music uh i don't want to say geek geek freak yeah bob seger tonight so when i said make my own records what you know, are you doing you make painting you can't your buy own? records i help people with their design of their albums so i can help them with uh either the whole design or i can just put the design into the template for the printer or i can come up with the they can work together and do a design but this album here we actually worked on with three different artists and this is coming to you, Phil. This is one I have to mail to you, so you'll get it one of these days. It's a new Vince Herman album, Enjoy the Ride. And myself, Scramble Campbell, and Aaron Rottier are three different artists that put artwork together for this. And I love that. I love, I love, I mean. And, and Vince's only instruction was kind of make it like a Monty Python, just paste it together, throw stuff together, make it fun. You know, and then he you picked know what up I just photographs. watched? The best of Monty Python two days ago. So you recognize my, my painting of Vince Herman there that I did for Vince a couple of years ago. And if you look around the, the thing, there's all these pictures of other musicians that influenced him, Woody Guthrie, a lot of people he recorded music with. And right up here is another one of my paintings, kind of secretly hidden in the in the, in the, in the piece of, of Colonel Bruce Hampton. 
from the aquarium rescue unit because I painted him a long time ago. And so something he wanted to have on there. Now, I haven't opened this yet. That is one of my favorite elms I've ever seen, John. That is fantastic. And thank you. That is amazing. I love that. You know, what's funny is like, the thing is like, so, so the, the background sketch is cra crazy scrabbles. That's um, Aaron Rottier did most of that stuff except for a few little elements I put in there. And I painted Vince and, and Bruce Herman. And then Scramble Campbell drew this picture of Vince down here at the bottom. So the idea that we all got to work on it together, and I was kind of in charge of how it fit together, but I, that they all submitted artwork. And if you look real close, on the back you can see a drawing that's kind of laid back into the green. And that's more Scramble Campbell work. And I'm going to open it up right now. Why don't you show your last record while I open this so I can show the rest of it. Okay. Uh, my last um is an old one. And... Um... This whole band, this is three cats, and well, it's four, but we're going to see um, who was historical Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Um, if you, what are you smelling? Um, this is a fresh track record. Of, if you're watching the show and you're older, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. I bet you know a hundred songs by either Neil Young or or any of the band members. A hundred songs if you're really a music geek. Even if you just had a radio in your house growing up. You don't have to even love music. If the radio was playing in the background where you grew up at, you heard their songs. I mean, okay. Right? I mean, you, I mean, from Neil Young heard. to the, the Offskirts, a lot, John, right? Oh, They're yeah. historical. And then everything that, that, that they did by themselves. David Crosby did his own stuff, and, and right. Graham Nash did his own stuff. Neil Even Young, of course, Stills, did his own stuff. which I'm a big Even fan. Stills of. is one of my favorite individuals yes. who took off from a band. Uh, Treetop Neil Flyer. Young, and then Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and then Crosby, Stills. So the cool thing about the records that come out these days, though, they're never white oh. anymore. <laughs> green, oh, love they're never green. white anymore. It's like Kermit Green we picked. Oof. So. Yeah, lucky enough to be a part of that. And Vince got a hold of me last time. It was like it was like last December when we started working on it. I've been listening to it for about a year. Um, I got a copy of this one for you though, because I always get two copies, and you're the only person that I feel is deemed worthy of my my releases. Worthy whole. So, you know, five records, folks, man, six records, whatever you want to call it. That's what we do on the show. It took that was a good 15 minute five albums. Those are good ones. I want to make you want to listen to music. Make you want to get the record player out. It's out. It's right there. The other one needs 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 a receiver, folks. I need a receiver. Gonna be looking for a receiver over the next few weeks, maybe. Um, tie dye outfits tonight. Tie dye uniforms. Tie dye, tie dye. Go put on a tie dye. Tell Grandma the Phil and John zones on. We're getting rain out here, and it's on the edge of uh, slipperiness. I bet it's, it is. No, it's it's almost gonna be February, and the forecast here in Chicago land is no snow. Yeah. My yeah. garden looks like it's ready to be. Plant. They're saying that we may not get major snow this year at all. Now, how they know global that, warming, I don't know, patterns, whatnot. Global warming at its finest. I, you know, is global warming a fluctuating thing, though? I wonder if it fluctuates. Got to live day to day. Oh, not day to day, but you can't dwell in the past. Don't look too back into... into uh, I was getting ready to talk about 1978 or 1977, the big... Uh, the big oh, that's when I was uh, just started my XRT and getting into uh, music that still lasts today. Hey, there's Shane Lyle the checking Flash, in. Hey, the Moody Blues to uh, Black Crows to ZZ Top to Zeppelin to Sabbath. In 77, 78, 70. Yeah, those bands last. And every band I just said, you know. You can't oh, say yeah. that about a lot of bands. Well, you named a bunch of radio bands, man. Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin. Well, they're radio bands. You're right. Now, they're so, you know, I go to show... I'll give an example real quick before I have to go to the bathroom. What are you talking about, Shane Lyle? Hey, Shane. Hey, Cubby fan. I think the Cubs are going to do good this year, Bob. I miss you, you just Bob. say that. Hold on. Malfunction. <laughs> what was that? Oh, if he just said types what he think he types, I don't want to give that news on the show. He doesn't want to. Oh. Is he coming on? No, man. David Crosby just passed this passed away today man ah oh, bummer i'm sorry chain oh that's i just he, he had to type in something about rip david crosby so i have to serve when i see that i have to search it right away man i just brought that i didn't know that no 
No, that's well, he's a, he's at that there again. He didn't pick that record intentionally. But there's a touch to that but that he was reaching out to the people loving maybe. And um, let's get hear it for David Crosby. Let's raise our let's raise our cups and have a have a drink for David Crosby, folks. Um, it's a very 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 important person in music history. Well, you know what? That's not too much of it. We'll just, let's we talk about the Crosby brothers, the Crosbys. That's pretty cool. David Crosby was was definitely a cool cat, man. Definitely a cool cat, and then weirdo, and all kinds of fun things, and all kinds of all kinds of just just wackiness. I tell you, that's the thing. Um, damn, we want that picture, David Crosby. We're stealing that picture. We're gonna show that off. So, <sighs> anyway. We're still here, folks. We're still here, and we're doing this for David Crosby tonight. Yep, yep, yep. I don't watch the news much anymore. We watched it about once a week. We watched it last night for about half an hour, and I turned it off, and you know, I've seen uh, gets people fired up, you know? Hey, Eric Carpenter, what's going on out there, friend? Hey, Katie, what's going on? Katie Elizabeth, good to see you out there. We were talking bubbles this other day. We need to find out our details for the Blue Ox pretty soon, figure out for what the plan is. What's the plan? Because me and Phil are going to try to get there first anyway. And there's yeah. my dad, Mike Griffin. How you doing, Dad? What's going on out there, buddy? What's up, Pops? Yeah, it is weird that we were talking about him when we heard that. I think that, that says something, is that right? Is for real? I mean, That's I for real, man. It's for real. 81 years old. I didn't old. know. I mean, wow. And I but, read your album last song. Take your hat off, raise your cup, whatever it takes to, to for David. You know, that's not, not you know. I have to go. Up. I I get a, another break. I get to have a cigarette. I don't smoke uh, cigarettes in the house. So I'm going to go say hi to all my family and friends. And I get to say I had to Mr. Crosby outside in a minute. I suppose it says a lot about the universe, folks, and how the universe works and how the universe reacts to things. And, and if you're thinking about something, there was an occasion one time when I had got up in the morning and decided to do a painting of Kurt Cobain because I was a big fan of Nirvana when we were growing up. And um, and they were had touched me as a kid. I thought that was what I was going to listen to forever until it was gone. <laughs> and so I got up one morning and I did a, a painting of Kurt Cobain. Just I'm going to paint him today. I'm going to paint him today. You know, I didn't turn the internet on. Maybe I did. A, I don't think I even did a search. I just had a picture of him in my head and painted him. I must have done a search. I must have had the picture ready. But anyway, did the picture, painted it all up, got online to go share it, and went to Facebook, and it was his birthday. So, you know, I get, we are all connected somewhere or another. I mean, it's just the memories we make together or the things that we do while we're traveling, with the music that we get to see. Like, I got to see Nirvana in concert when I was about, see, I would have been, that was 1991. So I'd have been 18 years old when I got to see Nirvana in concert by accident. You've heard the story before. I could tell it again, but it gets old. Um, but it was fun though. We got to see Nirvana, and then that was something I thought because I was 18. When you're 18, if you just happen to be 18 in 1969, man, look at the music that touched you when you were a kid. You know, and if you were 18 in 19, you know, 95, music touched you. If you were 18 in 2010, music touched you from that time period, because you're at that age where music really is, is important, and it makes you feel like um, makes you feel like you're in, you're included. You know, when the music's about you or by people like you. And so when you're 18 years old, you pick up the music that happens. When I, when I was 18, Nirvana come out and Soundgarden and, and Alice in Chains and all that stuff. Mark Lanigan, The Screaming Trees. And that music was my, that was my soul music. It still is. It's my childhood. And I think we went back a few weeks ago and watched the whole Alice in Chains unplugged together. Me and Phil did. Um, but my dad, he was, he was pretty much in 1969, he was, he was turned 18 or 19 years old. And he, um, and he, he was there when David Crosby was hitting, hitting those radio charts like that and making people, making people think and, and open up the eyes to... Um, to what, what it was, yeah, yeah, that's what I just said, man. That's funny, but so I think you, 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 it builds you as a person. The music you listen to kind of makes you who you are, it makes you what you what you, how you treat people, how you act, what you do, and so all that music touches us in some way or another. So, whenever that when somebody like that goes, we probably all are connected somewhere. There's like some some fireworks that go off in our little Crosby, Stills, and Nash brains, you know. So talking about that, uh, that it's really we're just talking about music in general and what, what when when you're 18, what's important to you? What music is like? Wow, that's the music that really gets you, you know? Right, yeah, you, folks. And what I was saying earlier, I probably listened to cross at 18, and there here I'm 60 and still listening to it. And um, yeah, it's pretty. I was just outside. I, I yeah, anyway, it's pretty. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Well, we, you know, that's 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 the, the universe talking to us, right? Saying, "Hey, it's going to be all right. Going to be all right." Because it is, folks. It is, folks. It's uh, Thursday, January nineteenth. If you're just tuning in, this is week one hundred forty-two of the Phil and John Zone. We've done one hundred forty-two shows, probably ten extras that are completely unedited. A lot of stuff we can't share. <laughs> 
they know where we're at they watch us they know if they want if you want to follow us you can follow us there's a place called the phil and john zone on facebook but anyway we don't really maintain that it's just for people share share shows hey troy phillips what's up buddy that's my hi troy a good buddy troy checking in tell leona we say hello troy if you're out there um, we're watching tonight. As you're, as you're chiming in, as you're saying you're um, you're here, and I, I'm, I've got a little uh, thing on it. Tell I'm me. here. Yeah. Again, Phil doesn't I, know who's watching. For all I know, Phil knows we've got the viewership of the Ed Sullivan show back in you know the, the in those days, but we don't. We have about ten people watching right now, which is pretty good. So hey, you know, tell your friends, tell Grandma, you know, to come in and watch the show with you, and we'll see what happens next. Hey, James Gardner, what's up, buddy? Hey, James, what's going on? Congratulations. Yep, yep, yep. So. What else is going on out there in the world right now, Phil? Um, it's raining uh, profusely outside, and I wish it was snow. And I don't know, global warming is kicking us in the ass. I was just outside, which is... Uh, and if you're in the living room, it's decorated like Christmas, and I see five pieces of your artwork, other artwork in the living room, and uh, we're ready for... a. Our holiday Christmas party this Saturday, and I'm cooking. I can, it smells like uh, making carne asada and tacos and I'm neck bones, and I'm cooking. And it's a holiday spirit. I have a day off work. I get a kind of a full-time, part-time job. And um, um, missing uh, music and missing my friends and come out to the roundhouse i will be there in a couple of weeks uh, with mr blotto and um, blue ox and uh, shoe fest and uh, we'll go from there but er besides that it's a beautiful thing we're uh, cooking and cleaning for about 30 people coming into the house and I have to leave halfway through the party because I have to go to work. <laughs> but it's cool. It's Besides true. that, I want to crank tunes. Unfortunately, I cannot at this point. Otherwise, I'll get a stop. <laughs> Does it tell you when I push mute that you've been muted? Does it say? Well, I, I, yeah, then I got a sign from Facebook or somebody, you know, don't. You know, last week I did this thing where I, I painted live for like two and a half hours. I did that big painting. Everybody was, was kind of watching beautiful. along. And I didn't care about music that night. I just played the music I wanted to listen to in the background. And um, what's funny is I just typed, I do not own the rights to the music in the in the explanation. And they haven't pinched me at all yet. Yeah. I'm waiting for it to get pinched and it hasn't pinched me even a tiny bit. Um, We're a small piece of the pie. We are, and they shouldn't be worried about us. And one time I got one where it said that the music you, is in your video belongs to somebody else. So they had to mute part of the video. But when I opened up why they muted it, it said in there, the musician lets people use his music. It's okay. So some musicians can click a button that says, sure, use my music in the background. It doesn't matter. So I'm hoping more musicians see that button. And then eventually we can play the songs that we're talking about. And we can talk, you know, we can, right. we can really, we, we can. We're not Napstar. We're not making money off it. We're promoting no. your music. We We're are just telling promoting. people to listen to David Crosby, you know? I'm about to get high, and I really don't care. Because, <laughs> like, if you hear this, if you hear this on the radio. What? My box. But you, that's it. You don't have to have anything other than that That little, um, or... Oh, well, my friend who works, works for radio said, uh, 20 seconds, you're paying 15, you're cool. Don't go over 20 seconds. That's a big market, though. Now, the other one that's almost as, just as famous, I'm pretty sure Crosby was part of this, too, is... Um... See, I'm going to, you know... You can't. There's so, that, those songs have been in so much, there's no... Now, you know, after the show, I, you, you might have to go... We're going to have to do a session afterwards. I do my thing. Yeah. I'm going to put on the YouTube and the, uh, Crosby still. I mean, the YouTube stuff that I got, me and John did it the other night. We listened to, uh, can I say, Allison yeah. Chains Unplugged, Nirvana Unplugged for hours. You know, he painted. I, you know, we did our. Here's another one. Here's another one. Just. All right. Like I said, over 100 songs guaranteed. 
Yeah, there's a lot of good music out there by them. My dad turned me on to them, I'm sure. we had. The, I know we had Deja Vu on record, and we had Crosby, Seals & Nash on record, too. That is Deja Vu that I pulled that album out. And and hey, Shane. I, I give my dad a lot of credit for the music I like today still, because a lot of that music that my friends sure weren't listening to, but my dad turned me on to, from Jim Croce to, to Crosby, Stills. My Stills, dad turned me on CD. to uh, opera music. And then his, my first uh, rock band that I remember was Neil Diamond. Yeah. And then it went from there. I was telling my dad, if you're still out there, I was showing the Rascals album earlier that I have. I'm pretty sure it was your old Rascals album. Stop it I'm going to show it again real quick. It's this one, the greatest hits of Rascals, Good Love and all that stuff. And there's two records inside of it. And it's my dad chiming in, so I'm going to tell the story again. But there's two records inside of it, but they're not either one of them, the Rascals. So that was such found, a good record. You you played it into oblivion until it had disintegrated, probably. Yeah, I found a lot of wild stuff in record sleeves. That's quite a trip. <laughs> yeah, Blue Ox does have an insane lineup. Jake Nobby, good to see you out there, Jake. Jake is one of my favorite recent singers and songwriters. Um, he's been putting out stuff like every couple of days. That Jake that came on our show into the artist, the Ode to an Artist song. Did you see that? You heard that. I do believe I befriended him. Um, yeah. Man, Jake, you want to come on the show and play a song, buddy? If you're if you're feeling up to it, you're watching the show. You're up to it, man. Board. I'm going to send you the link anyway because I just like sending the link out to people to see what they're up to and see if they're interested in doing what we do. And I'm just really turned on by what Jake's doing. His singing style, his his simple approach, his very um very rude, I want to call it rudimentary, but it's very um it's very si simple good music, you know. Kid, boy's home now, too. So now boy and wife are home. Mom and the boy are home. Who? The boy, Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Now, there's no pressure to come on the show out there, folks. If you want to come on the show and sing something, don't need this pressure story, on. Um, we, we invite jokes, stories. It's going to be tales. a Crosby, Stills, and Nash night. Yeah, it is. I've got, I've got a handful of records down there I'm going to get out. Um, Southern Cross. There's a bunch of stuff out there I want to listen to now. I mean, listen, I mean they're not just good songs. They're... Class. See, there's never pressure to come on the show to play a song, Jake. I just love your music. So I'm you say it. pressure one more time. Under pressure. No, I don't like that song. I love Bowie and uh, Queen, but that's. Nah. I mean, no. There's too many other good things they could do. Do you think that that Ice Cube or Vanilla Ice ruined it because he made it popular the other way? Not even think about it that way, Jack. No, because well, no, everybody heard that Vanilla Ice song. It was that was the year of Hammer and Ice. Whenever we had MC Hammer and we had Vanilla Ice. You're younger now. Think about that. that it's music. It's still like having, music uh, in some vein. Adam Lambert play for uh, Queen with uh, replacing Freddie Mercury. Hey, are you kidding me, Jack? Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Tough one. Here I we go see again. For like a benefit, or like a like a what Hall of Fame. Was it a Hall of Fame induction or something like that? Right. What was our conversation in our uh, podcast, one, you know, private? All I bitch about was you cannot change a, a lead singer. How could you yeah, do that? It's very rare. Less than five, less than one hand were the bands that changed lead singer and kept doing really good stuff. I have a million hands and you could have one hand and it works. Today we were listening to Blind Melon and it was on, it was on Shuffle. Well, that freaked me out because he there was... There's a new Blind Melon album that they put out after Shannon passed away that Travis sings on and it's not... The same soul. The okay. Music. The different. video we it's saw at Metro with Blind Melon, what I saw, the mm -hmm. band members were, I mean, that video was John. That was one of the greatest videos. You got to watch that again. That's a great it's show. It's a, it's one of his last concerts, too. That's pretty much towards the end of his Yeah, life. he was out there. Yeah, he was out yeah, there. He was out there. And, 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 but and the band guys who played, I feel sorry for that. Like when Allison Chains and Jerry Cantrell and the dudes, it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. I I still support those bands. You know, I still have to, I went and saw Blind Melon with the new singer with Travis because the music's so important. Now if if if, if Alice in Chains club members I went and saw them, I give it a chance. I walked halfway out through the show. Yeah, I told you that. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do, do it. Do what? I left the uh, left the show at Alice in Chains without Lane Staley. Um went to a show in the city. I haven't left very many shows. I've been kicked out of a couple shows. Well, I just left. Well, I've been. I don't think I've been kicked out. I got kicked out of the Descendants one night, or the, all at the Mississippi Nights. But I had to say I got kicked out of Mississippi Nights once because I did a lot of stuff there that I should have got kicked out for. No. I never only got kicked out that one time. One time I was stage diving at the Dead Milkman show. Okay, you want to hear the story? And we're yes. at this 
the crazy pit, dead milkmen were all circling around, jumping on each other, and people are getting on the stage and jumping into the audience, you know. So I'm going to do it too. I'm going to stage dive too. And um, I got up there and I did it. I had a blast, you know. And and so I did it again. I went back up there to stage dive the second time. And as soon as I jumped in the audience, like the security guy, which were these great big bulldog dudes, he grabbed a hold of me, and he starts like pulling me back towards the edge of the uh, towards the edge of the pit to take me out the front door to kick me out of this dead milkman show, right? And um, this guy grabs my other arm in the pit. So now I got a security guard on one arm and I got another guy who I don't even know on the other arm pulling me. I'm getting stretched like I'm on the rack, okay? And the other guy that's in the pits has got a little more to it. He puts his arm around me and just like yanks me back into the pit. And then and we run across this little, it's a small area. This is only like a 12 foot wide area that we're in. And there's so many people in there though that I'm able to like duck into like three people where they can't see me. And me and dude change shirts. Like he gives me his shirt and I give him my shirt and, um, and finish the show out. Like not that dude that jumped off the stage. <laughs> so I kind of, and I, and I, and I don't regret it. It was awesome. It felt really good to do it. And it was fun. And Dead Milkman is, a, is the funnest pit because it's not violent. It's just about, it's about fun and it's about crunching into each other and not really like punching each other, you know? So it was, that was fun. Now when they start punching each other in those events, I don't, I didn't like that at all, you know, but so that so I, I got kicked out almost got kicked out that night but I didn't get kicked out and I saw the rest of the show I was kind of cool I didn't get back on the stage again <laughs> do you ever stage dive no no I got kicked out of a show for stage diving once too and I also kicked my friend in the face one time when I was stage diving I felt really bad I don't think I ever did it after that I've been in mosh pits but not stage dives we were wild kids in the 90s the early 90s was all about like as wild as you could get as much energy as you could put out as loud as you could be and as wild as you could get the kids to be. And so we were nuts. We were all a bunch of freaking nut bogs, you know. The most obnoxious I've been in, in not, not even in an obnoxious way, was the coolest thing I did. I went with a friend who was older, and he goes, Let's, I was into the Clash. And so we went to the Clash, and he was a photographer. He goes, they're going to steal our, they won't take our camera, they're going to take our film. So stash a roll of film in your spa, in your uh, uh, socks. They'll take our film out of the camera. They'll give you a camera. So we went in and we're like this. And this big dude off the stage saw me taking pictures. And he literally, and I just ducked down and he never got it. <laughs> he had great photos, long story short. Yeah, I like to see those photos. Um, I was a teenager, lived in my parents' house, and we had a flutter house and all the pictures are gone. Oh, shucks. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. I mean, I can close my eyes. I saw the clash. They were right there. And it, it, it changed my. Anyway, kind of. Both. But, you, I, it, you know, the music, the touch. Then it's called stuff. Up. What are you going to do with stuff? Well, those pictures are probably good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Some of that stuff is. I have a t shirt from oh, the Nirvana night. Yeah. I bought the t shirt from the Nirvana concert, and they didn't make that t shirt after that tour. And a dude offered me $250 for that shirt recently, but I won't sell it. What, okay, you're still not old. I'm getting at a point. What am I going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? What am I going to do with it? I'm going to wear it every now and then. I wear it in honor of my brother. My brother Tommy passed away, and I wear it in honor of the band Nirvana because it's it's a little bit. It says that "fucker" on the back of it. I, I told Laura she's wearing a red pair of Nikes tonight. She's downstairs in the basement, ready for the cleaning up for the party. She's I got a rare pair there. of red Nikes, and I said, "What do you get them for?" Now she's wearing them tonight. But she's also wearing my brother's, uh, who passed away, hey, Paul, um, Blackhawks uh, shirt that's signed by old Blackhawks. And it's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. It's important. So I just, instead I of putting it in a box or a closet or in the attic, use it. Well, this is a good segue for us to go into this alphabet thing tonight, because we kind of talked about this a little bit. It's an exciting topic tonight, the alphabet game, I think. It's going to be a lot more. It's going to take a while because well, it's going to have to talk about every one probably a little bit. I might have to take a break in between letters, though. Yeah, you might. You already took a break. Do you need me? What are you tell me? I already took a break when you. Oh, don't go there. <laughs> All right. What well, times are we going to stop this car, Phil? <laughs> so I thought tonight, and actually, Phil kind of came up with this idea last week because we were talking about albums that were really important to us when we had one of our dates, we call them. And um, what albums do we jam? Like, just do we just play over and over and over and over again to until we were tired of it or until you know something new came out? And I, I came up with the one for almost every letter of the alphabet, for sure. I did a little, I did a little pre, uh, 
Well, I did not. I it could so. be the be band or the album. We're trying to get the album. It could be band or album. The band that leads into an album. Like if it's the band then you, that you use the letter for, then talk about the album that you played. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. God, I think I, I need a 15 second timeout. I got Chester and Holland. <laughs> okay. 15 second timeout for Phil. And we're going to do Then We're going to do the ABC game here in a minute. You take your time. I play your sports theme, but everybody knows that one. Could we play our theme song again? No, we won't play our theme song again. Maybe we will. I'm in the John. The Phil and John zone. I'm in the John. Phil and John zone. I'm in the John. Phil and John zone. You know that story about the Dead Milkman show? I went to 15 to 20 shows at that place, and there was always a story to tell. Always a story to tell. I saw Soul Asylum one time, and the lead singer was so drunk. But he was reaching for the microphone next to the microphone. I think he signed a pack of rolling papers for somebody right in front of me. I didn't, uh, he signed something for me, but I don't know what it was. Probably the ticket stub. But there's about hundreds of those stories. There's so many of them. I should sit down and think about writing them down. Because the night we met Nirvana, the, to the night we saw Thrill Kill Cult, to the night that we were disappointed by the same band we already saw that was great before. I mean, there's, all, there's so many tales that happened at this one club in, in, in um, St. Louis called Mississippi Nights. That's, that's my all-time favorite venue is the Mississippi Nights in St. Louis. There's nothing better than it. Yeah, I love the castle. I love the canopy. I love all the places we go. That is nice place. But Mississippi Nights one thing, If any incredible. band members or bands or people who are moaning um, concerts, um, or if you're a band member, it's about the ambience, too. Put a carpet down, have a backdrop, get some lighting, light a candle. My candle, yeah. We, we, we talked about that. You talked about like if you look over there, I'm not going to switch the camera. I got five candles going. Anyway, I don't, not about me. The bands have a backdrop. You have have ambience into the club or the what you're yeah. doing. Uh, I've seen some average bands, and just because they had some ambience, I go, "Wow, that made it sound good." I'd go see them again, and that's it it's ambient. A, lot, a lot of bands i saw at that place were no ambiance at all just a black room with speakers no. like you were seeing a band at a bar but you were seeing bands like the vinyl femmes and dead milkman and nirvana and soundgarden and dinosaur jr and i could go on red hot chili peppers played there before they got too big to play there all right now i gotta get one more beer and then we're gonna start abc's okay yeah we're gonna we're gonna really prep for this one tonight folks it's not gonna be that i know i'm prepping uh, let's um let's, let's while we're waiting let's look at this great picture i just found i love i love looking at these images of stuff that are important in this picture of dave good old dave crosby let's hear it for him before we get into this whole session all right just... that's pretty important stuff that's pretty neat and it's, it's all right hard. are we going aa or ab i think we'll go aa we'll all do aa together all right Okay, so we'll we're both go. go. We'll try because I got one for every letter, so we might as well try and do one for each letter. You're right. No, I'll go not. first. You know. All right. All right, go for it. One of the albums I played like so much. I got. I was in a CD club when I was a kid. Probably one of those CD clubs where you send a penny and get ten discs. And I got the Almond Brothers uh, band. It was like the best of the Almond Brothers band. You know, it's like the fifteen best songs. You know, I listen. I still that CD is still in my CD case. I listen to it still to this day. And that was probably nineteen ninety four or five when I bought that disc. Which isn't like when it came out, obviously. But that's when I got turned on to it. And the Allen Brothers Band from uh, Melissa to Little Martha to Ain't Wasting No More Time, all that stuff, that touched me for I played that album a lot. A lot. So that's my A. Okay. I'm going to get confused on I'm bad with titles of songs and albums. Um, I'm thinking of a lyric or just a word. I mean, you like I, I'm bad with that too, but the album. And I have. <laughs> It's hanging up in my studio. Um, ACDC um, with Angus Young, uh, Black and Black. Uh, that's um, uh, if you anyway. ACDC, the first album. Yeah. Um, how old were you think over, when you got? The, how old do you think you were when you got that record? Like twelve or something? No, wait, twelve. Are you kidding me? No, it was older than that, but. Uh, I'm talking about an album. First, we're going to go to albums and then we'll go down to CDs and whatever we listen to on the radio. But ACD, you, um, I played it over and over and over um, with, with Bon Scott and then it got to Cliff. But uh, big fan of ACDs. Okay, B. B. For me, it hands down is Blind Melon, Blind Melon. Probably played more than anything, even more than the Beatles album. I played Blind Melon so many times. 
I still I listen to it today. I listen to that album once a week at least my whole life since I was 15 or 16 years old. And when it came out, I'm guessing 1990 or 1989, I bought it was my first CD I bought. Okay, the first CD I went and purchased for $20 or $13 or whatever. And um, I still have that CD of that, that first album. I, the first CD I bought, I mean, I still have the original copy of it and listen to it. It's in the car always. Blind Melon, Blind Melon. Yeah, I lost my record collection a couple times in floods when I was a kid. And unfortunately, because I was a record collector. But I played it. Uh, um, it it's a rare band from England or whatever. It's called Budgie. Uh, Melty Ice Away. It's with a parrot on it. And I played it over and over when I was a kid. And it was, uh, don't you break down of your health. I mean, Budgie. Uh, What's the name of the album? Melty Ice Away. Okay, I'm, right. I'm writing some of these down because I want to listen to them too. I, n- I never listened yeah, to them. Yeah, it's a big uh, pla- uh, uh, parrot and a blue uh, covered sleeve. Nice. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Melt the Ice Away. It's killer song, killer song. I played it over and over and over. When I was a kid. Kid. Okay. I never, heard, I never heard Budgie. I never heard him. I'm, I'm going to listen to that. Really B-U-D-G-I-E. Yeah. yeah. Look for um, the pair. C, C was easy for me because I, when I was a kid, when I was 10 years old, I got a, a tape deck, a you know, tape player. You know, I had one speaker, tape player, you know. And I got two tapes at the same time. I got 1984 by Van Halen. And I got the Cars, Heartbeat City. And I thought I was in the Cars. I thought I was Benjamin Orr. I thought I was Rick Ocasek. I was like, I thought I was in the Cars when I was a kid. I, I listened to that album probably from the time I was 10 till I was like 13 and a half every day. Hello. Hello again. Do, 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 do. You know, all right. that <laughs> keyboard. I love it, you know, though. So, Cars, Heartbeat City, man. All right. C, we're going to go with something that just, you have to flash because there's so many Cs, but Cheap Trick. Um, got to see him many a time. I got to saw him on New Year's Eve at a private party at the Double Door where they uh, played a midnight show and it was Hell Bent for Leather. It's not huge. It, it, I'm a big fan of Cheap Trick. I got to meet the cats downstairs at the Smart Bar at the Metro. Uh, big fan of them. It, we need a half hour segment of the stories I could tell you about. Maybe we should do it. If I make an effort, there's a chance I could probably get Miles Nielsen to interview with us. Now, Miles Nielsen is is Mr. Nielsen's son. He's from Chief. I know that. You know, yeah, um, um, he's good friends with Ed Anderson, and Cody, and those guys. And I haven't reached out through those guys to anybody but i bet if i really tried hard we could have a cheap trick show Mm -hmm. but based around the son of cheap trick right yeah we know a lot of people i know a lot of people if i tried harder yeah by the way the miles nielsen and the rusted hearts is a great band if you guys see them on killer band killer band really good fantastic i'm at the roundhouse i saw them three or four times I, i think they're fantastic and yeah, I, I, he, he was playing with um with Ed Anderson one night, and a guy wanted to play one of his guitars, and he said he could pick any guitar. He had this big rack of guitars, and the guy walked over and touched the first guitar, and he goes, "That was my dad's guitar." And the guy wouldn't play it. He played the tambourine anyway. For D, I'm gonna say the Dead Milkman. The album is called Big Lizard in My Backyard, and that was the cause of that story earlier, where I got pulled out of the crowd and back into the crowd. Uh, big Lizard in My Backyard. By the Dead Milkman. If you haven't ever listened to it, it's very sarcastic and it sounds weird. It, it, it's got some stuff in it that's questionable, but it's all it's all very interesting music to listen to. They, they who write a song about people bringing guns to school way before people brought guns to school, so <laughs> it wasn't their idea, but they were thinking about it, that kind of thing happening, you know. The Dead Milkman, and they never took it seriously. They were always fun. No, they they still are fun. They're kind of politically deranged, but that's that's the best thing for them. Politically deranged. So you were, what's your D album? Um, an album itself. I'm kind of thinking. Or band, or you can be like I said. I I use the band. You know, we we okay. you know that I had I had three in my head, and they all uh, I'm trying to think of. We're gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna come up with bands that I seen that that people would freak that they know probably are alive. A Deep Purple. Uh, with Richie Blackburn, Ian Lord, and uh, I'm a Highway Star. I don't know. Um, uh, my woman from Tokyo. Uh, they were heavy. They were deep. I love English rock. I like English music. I, and it's so deep purple. 
I like I like Deep Purple. That's that's the, that's the origin of heavy metal right there. Really, I and mean, that was it. That was one of those steps into heavy metal where it came out of. You know, um, all these are going to be really obscure for me. Well, we're going back into that that Mark Lanigan phase because for E, I have an album called Every Good Boy Deserves Fudge, and it's by a band called Mud Honey. There again, another band out of Seattle that was um, loud, scream rock, whatever you want to call it. You know, crazy stuff that attacked to me when I was eighteen. And and Mud Honey was actually before Nirvana. Because uh, we, we was listening to Mud Honey on the way to the Nirvana show. We didn't know who Nirvana was. So talk about the evolution of where how music happens, you know. Um, but we were listening to the Mud Honey on the way down to see those guys. So go check them out, Mud Honey, Steve, Mark, the guys. I'd like to get them on the show. I, I seriously doubt it. If anybody knows Mud Honey, let me know. What letter am I in? Well, you can choose to do E like I just did, or you can skip to F if you like. If you right, get we'll stumped, go to you know, E. Go no, no, letter. no. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Yeah, I thought you'd uh, like Emerson, I'm going back Palmer. to the era of Elm, because back in the day, that's what you do when you get busy or you have kids, you get married. You don't listen to as much music. But back in the day, I'm, I'm going early stuff and then newer stuff. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Carnival number nine. Uh, just... Uh, the uh, gray elm with that skeleton face that's a classic elm uh, trilogy, I do believe it is. Uh, anyway, uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer, the gray skull. Someone's going to chime in and go, That's what it is. Brain salad surgery. Right. Well, well, well Troy likes Bachman Turner Overdrive for B. I want to make sure Troy knew we saw this Bachman Turner Overdrive was his selection for B for his album. We're, I'm up to F now, so I'm going to say the album I listened to that started with F was Fugazi by Fugazi, the first album, Waiting Room, Patient Boy, all that stuff. I uh, didn't really understand their theme, their 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 motives, and I didn't know they were political. I didn't know what they were saying was so important because they were just screaming at us, but we liked the way they screamed at us, so we listened to their music. What happens then is you've got a political point that you're trying to get across, but you're just hollering at people so people don't really get it, so I never understood that when I was a kid. Go back and listen to it now. I really see, like, wow, they were really saying some shit. You know, I guess I just didn't have my um, connected synapses or whatever at the time to think about what that shit meant, you know. So the subject was uh, albums. So everything is going to go back flashing to late 70s to 80s because that's yes. the subject. Um, I'm going to go with a fog hat. Seen him five, six, seven times. Got to meet a couple of the cats. Um did a few but again you fuck hat uh fool for the city uh it was four guys lonesome dave and the cast there were just four dudes or three dudes when they bands play i like that and it was you, you, okay fuck hat so what's just happened in, in this last moment was that we might have we have jake nobby is going to come in and maybe do a song for us. i need power go ahead keep talking so get your power sword. We're going to take a break in the middle of this alphabet game. This is a good one tonight. I think we might continue to make it go on. Um, my dad likes Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, Phil. That's awesome. Um, so we'll come back to alphabet game, but we're going to bring Jake into the room. Jake and our friend Kristen here, see what they're hanging out tonight. And um, this is my guy friend, Jake Nobby, I was talking about lately, earlier, folks. Jake Nobby with a K. Uh, he's from the central Illinois area, which I always love supporting the musicians that are from central Illinois. And I would like to think that he's one of my Wait, favorite. Are we working too. overtime? Now you're going to pay me. Oh, we might have to get another beer. Um, but he's he's hooking it up, getting a connection. Like you, real audio. Gonna, you got audio for sure there, Jake, but you don't have video yet, bud. I can do. Let's send you a link thing, a button to push, maybe. If you want to be seen, if you just want to be heard, that's even more powerful as it goes. You know. How are you, Jake? I know we've had a lot of guests on. Is this one of the guests I like? Yes. At the, he said yes, so I'm guessing that yes. Yeah. I'm just seeing if I can do the real audio on my phone here. Oh, Sorry. I see. Oh, oh, the musician, the original sound stuff? Yeah, if you'll be able to hear me, all right. Yeah. Well, what album do you think you were you played the most, Jake, when you were growing up? Like on, on like when... What's that? What album do you think you played the very most when you were growing up? Oh, man. Um, or just one like you played Oh, man. You know, you're talking about Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. I listened to to that album a lot. Um, mm -hmm. That Teach Your Children Well song, I listen to that all the time. You're sideways, Jake. I don't know if that matters to you or not. It doesn't matter to us. Um, 
What I find after 142 weeks when uh, Jake comes in here and he, he was actually listening to our show or watching it, that freaks me out. So. <laughs> I, 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 I like when other people actually watch the show. That's pretty. He likes to think it's Kevin's purpose. talking to you, John, but. That Jake. song he sang for us with the, with some stuff we said in there that was that was very touching, Jake, and it, it still sticks. Yeah, it was, it was dope. So yeah, awesome I don't stuff. know. If you'll be able to hear me and my guitar, all right? Or if I it's can gonna hear you. Sound weird. Is that coming through okay? It is coming through fine, Jake. I, and we'll let you have the sound stage here for a second. I'll put you on the pin pod and whatever, and then um, you'll get as best you can. That's all we can do. And some of these cool old recordings are going to sound like old time recordings, and the, when they get them out there someday, you know. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, something new for you. Uh, this is a song from last week uh, about regret. I guess it's called "The Bronze Colored Camel." Okay, here we go. Well, I wish I'd bought that bronze colored camel at the antique store just up the way. The sign said going out of business, but I forgot to go back the next day. Well, I wish I'd bought that bronze colored camel, the one with the clock on its back. I've often heard the camels go far in that clock. It would help me keep track of the things I've forgotten, the people and when, well, those hands could remind me of the places I've been. I wish I'd bought that bronze colored camel at the antique store just up the way. But there was boxes in the basement I found a washboard that said made right. Oops. I bought a tiny statue of Buddha who just sits covering his eyes. Miniature frogs, pictures and frames. Well, a 50 cent treasure is a treasure just the same. Perhaps someday our paths will cross again at an auction, a sale, or in a stack. There's a clock, oh, there's a box with a bronze colored camel. One with the clock on its back. Oh, well, that was pretty rough. That's the first time I've played that one for anybody. Okay. I'll do one more, it might be a little bit better. Hey, it's hard to get better than that. That was awesome, Jake. Don't you right. don't say that about yourself, man. It's great stuff. Okay. Please keep going. That's a brand new one. John Prine painting on the wall in black and yellow. Some cobwebs on the lamp on that old coffee table. She's the one I like best. One couch is gold, the other couch is black. There's ample pillows and both have cats on the back. She's the one I like best. One I like best, hands above the rest. She's the one I like best. Well, there's coffee in the kitchen, and rules is rules. She knows them by heart. She's the one I like best. There's dice on the table. She always keeps score. But I like losing just fine. She's the one I like best. One I like best, hands above the rest. She's the one I like best. 
John Prine painting on the wall, black and yellow. She's the one I like best. Originally air, originally uh, broadcast on our, our show five or six weeks ago. That song is uh, still very touching. That's uh, reaches out to people you in your life. That's pretty neat, Jake. I love it, dude. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think you're you're my, you're my key to fame, and you don't even know it yet. Because <laughs> someday they're going to be talking about the early Jake Nobby stuff, and they're going to be like, and there were these weird recordings on this weird show with these yeah. weird art dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that'll be our that'll be our mention in history somewhere down the line, Jake. That's beautiful. I love it, man. Love it. And the bronze color camel. That's that's beautiful too. That's great. Yeah, that was, that was a little rough. I've only played that one a few times. That's pretty new. That's real, real nice song, right? You got there, bud. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. That's about it. We're just sitting around today watching you guys. So cool. Well, hey, Kristen, how are you? Good to see you guys. Very good to see you. <laughs> Very good to see you. So yeah, we're, we're kind of we got we're only up to F in the alphabet game, which might take like two hours tonight. The way we're going, yeah. But there's always there's so many albums that we played. I think the thing about our music is there's so many albums that we probably played till they were no good anymore. You know, yeah. It's a way to do it, I suppose. When I grew up, music's always been important, I suppose. You know. So what's next for you, Jake? Are you been doing any shows or anything like that, or playing anywhere? Uh, possibly, we're talking about it, maybe, but nothing definite yet. But. uh there's definitely sounds like going to be a lot of stuff going on this summer. So, well, I got you hopefully booked for the June 8th, 17th and 18th at my birthday party or my, my 50th uh, okay. my, my summer solstice party. It's not a birthday party. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're looking at our calendar, trying to trying to plan out everything we need to keep track of. So we'll definitely fast. put that on there. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, at some point, even if it's just for one day, well, we're going to make it happen. Um, yeah. That that's really cool. Oh, yeah. and, and it's not until July, but if you're around on the 15th is a Saturday, our friend Ben Davis Jr. is coming to play in Clinton. Nice. At, where I work at La Tida, we have outdoor music stuff there. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. Just a little half hour drive this way. I like that idea for sure. I'd like to see Ben play for sure in, in person. Yeah, uh, he's definitely. Good. Awesome, man. We guys got any shows coming up you're going to go to and see? And then that one? Uh, we got Sierra Farrell coming up in March. Yeah. Sierra oh, Farrell. Yeah. I want to see her. And uh, Chicago Farmer on St. Patrick's Day. He's going to be in Bloomington playing. We'll get that for sure, most likely. We He's doing that. a solo show in Petersburg, Illinois, I saw, I believe. He shared a post about that today. Uh, that'd be a good one to go see for sure. Yeah. We, you know, we grew up going to Cody shows when it was just Cody for a long time. And I love the, the field notes, but you got to see both of them. You got to experience both of them. Yeah. You know. All right. All right. I'm up off here. Thanks for letting me come on. All right, Jake. Thanks for the music, brother. See you. Thank you, Jake. Right. Yep. See ya. Thanks for watching, too. Have a good Thursday. Cool. People Peace. are watching, Phil. <laughs> so that's our good friend, Jake Nobby, folks. Jake Nobby with a K. Please uh, follow him. Follow, follow him. He's got it. He's got it. Good stuff. I can't find it right now, but he's got this really creative, interesting way to Sarah's stuff on um, on YouTube too. So we gotta check that out, and I'll I'll share a link for that here in a second. But yeah, really, really good good guy to good guy to happen to know. He just seems like a pretty neat, pretty neat guy. And the songs he's writing are like he's putting them out. I'm telling you, someday they're gonna be talking about his early stuff, <laughs> and it's gonna be a premiere on our show. That's gonna be it, man. <laughs> it's very good, very good stuff. I really appreciate what he does and how he does it. So if you get a chance, check him out. And I'll share the how you find him. When you I wish you all were here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's got another song called She Likes Todd Snyder. I mean, this guy's got music. He's just coming out with like, it's, I mean, I'm going to give you a link to one of his Facebook or one of his YouTube videos. And you guys can follow him there if you like to and um, see what he does. Here's, happy out. Thursday. We're starting to export off Facebook. I think there's a thing I'm thinking about Facebook. And we'll put this in the middle just real quick here. Is that like, you know how you get those those emails that are from a robot? You hide in Chester? You get a message from a robot, okay? It's on your Facebook. You don't click on it because it's a robot sent it to you. Well, after we're all gone, the cockroaches are going to be left, and there's going to be robots texting each other on Facebook. That's right. I was still on. So anyway, from where we were at was G, if you want to continue. Yeah, record G for the record be, we, um, we wore out. I can go. No, I'm never worn out. Well, yeah, no. I mean records that we wore out. Oh, they're, 
we're cranking start... downstairs. We got the fireplace going on, and uh, am I taking you away from your night off here? Um, no. Okay, good. A G would be. I have two. All right. Um, we would go. We would go with uh. It's not Grateful Dead. It's gonna be uh, something you Genesis. listen to. Genesis before um, Genesis, because that's what I grew up with. Um, Peter Gabriel, stuff like that. We're gonna reflect Elms because it was uh, wind and weathering. Even before that, Lamb of uh, Genesis. Just go with Genesis. Yeah. Mine is a uh, "Good to Be" by Edward David Anderson in the backyard tire fire. Um, good that's to be solo coming up. It's okay. It's all right. I'm alive and it's good to be. I always think that's good. Hey, uh, Troy says Grand Funk Railroad. He's going to chime in on this game too. He's playing with us now. So Troy says Grand Funk Railroad is his jam in the G's. So we get to H. What's your H record? Heart by far. Heart by far. By far. I wore that out over and over. And it, it, all their so I've seen them four or five times. Heart and they their encore is Zeppelin, but heart uh by far dream on annie by yeah. far it's a good record i mean it can go other and it's gonna uh zero my mind and something that i listen to this is gonna show our ages and all this stuff you're picking heart and i'm picking the butthole surfers hairway to steven there's an album called hairway to steven and there's no words there's no writing inside the album for the song titles it's just little pictures but it's by the butthole surfers which as you know is one of my old favorite bands or again my rebellious youth phase or whatever it was did they paint an album for you? You painted Butthole Surfers album for me. It's right there. It's Where? Let's see it. Um, <laughs> dark over there now. <laughs> he used to be bright when we started the show. <laughs> anyway, so Hairway to Steam by the Butthole Surfers. You know, and I, I is kind of tricky. I don't know if you got an oh, eye. Oh. I? Yeah. Um... Iron Butterfly, Iron Butterfly, I guess, back in my day. Um, you probably know three or four songs. Iron Butterfly, I'll just go with I real quick. Okay, we'll go and speed it up. I'm going to go I Against I by Bad Brains. There was an album called I Against I. And it was the first album I, like, I think I thought, I really wanted to hear the lyrics of what they meant by I Against I. All right? What's that mean, I Against I? Like fighting against yourself, kind of, you know? You're thinking too deep. Too deep. All right, let's go away from that and uh, go to Jay. What's your Jay? Um, one of the greatest guitar uh, guitarists I've ever seen. I only seen him twice. On uh, the first concert, I saw Granada Theater. He just passed away. Uh, Jeff Beck. Um, wired and blow by blow. I'm just go with wired. Um. He talk without talking. So Jeff Beck, yeah, by far wired. Some of that stuff I've been I've been listening to Blow by Blow this week, and that's a the air blower. There's some great songs on there that are conceptually just music, but he's titled them. And then if you think about the title while you're listening to the music, it makes you put the title into the music. It's like a painting. It's an abstract painting, correct, really. correct. Yeah. And and you have to think about why he called it that while you're listening to the song. You know, I, I love it. I love it. It's love like it. poetry. I mean, mm -hmm. now. Uh, one of the first cassettes I ever bought was Jane's Addiction, Nothing Shocking. Jane's Addiction. You know, Jane Says and, and Been Caught Stealing and Coming Down the Mountain. Um, and that was my jam for a lot of years. I, I go back to it every now and then whenever I really need to go fast, I guess it's something, you know. But but Jane's Addiction, Nothing Shocking is my J. K is for uh, Kiss. Okay, yeah. I don't know the album. I don't know what it was. I it's just in general. Well, I actually get the album right, but I'm not going to say that. But I listened to a lot of Kiss back in the day. I saw them back up the Rolling Stones, and they blew away Rolling Stones. I saw them Kiss a couple of their times. And I try to think, I always think that, I don't like, they really... Anyway, Kiss. Um, I don't think it really matter what album you listen to by Kiss. 
I mean, there were a few hits. I don't like were, Beth, you know, the song Beth, though. Was, that's my favorite song. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was one of the first songs I remember thinking about when I was like when I grew up. <laughs> Think about the lyrics, man. No! Okay, for K, I got cool in the gang, but I never really had Thank a cool God in the gang. God, you record. switched the letters. For K, I had cool in the gang, but I never really listened to cool in the gang all that much, because, but I did listen to him a lot. There was a radio band I liked, and I always enjoyed I got to see him in concert a few years ago, um, and it was just cool. The new gang. It's not actually a gang anymore, because that was probably what started the whole gang thing. I don't know. Was it Cool and Gang's fault? Probably not. But um, Cool and the Gang, Jungle Boogie, and anything that Cool and the Gang did. Celebration, you know, ladies' night. Cool and the Gang was awesome, man. One thing my dad did give me when I was a kid was soul music. and he brought, um, One thing he loved was Earth, Wind, and Fire. And um, I remember that sticking out really strong when I was real little. Uh, we lived next to this cat named Terry Jones, I think was his name. A uh, black cop in my town, not to be, you know, but he, he was. And um, and I think that, I don't know if the Earth, Wind, and Fire happened about that time, but I remember Earth, Wind, and Fire being real strong when I was a kid. And that's off subject. We're at L now, so I think we're probably going to pick the same band for L, i got a feeling. But will we pick the same album? Probably not. No. Um, by far my favorite band, and it's a four-piece band at England. Uh, my favorite album is you're not going to pick, but Led Zeppelin is by far my favorite band. Was there an album you my played? My favorite more, album is Presence, the White Album with Dad Figure. Achilles last Nobody's last Fault but Mine, Achilles Last Stand. No, I might have to go to that. Oh, I think I went with I just, my. Well, I think no, you know what? I'm wrong because I was going to say. Houses of the Holy, but the album I listened to more than any other album was Led Zeppelin Three, okay, with Tangerine and Bronyar and Bronyar Stomp. Now that album has got a, a range of music on it. It's really good. Man. I try to um, as I get old, I keep as I get older. I try to uh, be more diverse, but I'm I just looking Friends. at video work. This is, there's no technology. Dude, these guys are just doing it. When I see footage, like we watched in our uh, Phil and John's own uh, um, after show party for five hours, and we watch these videos. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. I had to do that. I just want to show something I got for Christmas from my girlfriend, Laura. Uh, Anthony Bourdain, one of my uh, huge... Uh, he was an ass. I can watch a show if you can read what he said. My friend Anthony. The poster. I like it. I like it. I like it. He was pretty. It's really awesome. not a poster. It's it's like a cheesecloth, like. I was a cook. Anyway, good. <laughs> he was a pretty incredible cat right there. He, he's got a lot of good. good yeah, I couldn't watch him for um, a year or whenever because I go, what you asshole? <laughs> couldn't watch it. Now, I, I don't think I was the only one. That's funny that I was not the only one if you're really into him. He was cool. He was. I've noticed a lot of albums on my list are like greatest hits albums because I listened to. The Brain salad surgery. Work next for one you, for me. work for me. Are you going? Are we going to go on to M? Or are we going to stop here? Keep going. Come on. If for M, I'm going to say Mania by the Ramones. It was a greatest hits album, Ramones Mania, and it was every song you want by the Ramones on one tape. You know, it was about 45 minutes long, 19 or 25 songs, maybe 30 songs. <laughs> and, okay, um, M, M. Um, uh, album I played over and over, Montrose, Rock Candy Baby, Hot, Sweet, and Sticky, Montrose, the yellow and red album, over and over, Montrose, Ronnie Montrose, that's what I listened to over and over. Now, Sammy Hagar wasn't in that band, was he? What's that? Sammy Hagar and Montrose? In, it's like Van Halen without, man, come on. <laughs> For oh, for and well, switching to singers, dude. No, it doesn't have to give me anything that applies to the song. Well, yeah, it was Sammy Hagar was in that. Yeah, he was in I Montrose. Mean, yeah, 
Before he was Sammy Hagar, before he was Van Halen. Before right. he was Van Hagar, excuse me. Yeah, it was, yeah. I um, mean, just listen to his... For so Anne, I don't want to listen to tonight. That's going to be interesting. For Anne, Anne, I'm, I'm thinking Nirvana, like never mind for Anne. Anne. Nirvana, never mind, because I listen to that too much. Too much. When those kids in that in that sandwich shop said they love classic rock, and I asked them what their favorite classic rock album was, and they told me Nirvana, never mind, it made me sad. But I'm classic rock now, so um, deal with that, I suppose, you know, in time. So Nirvana, never mind for N. Are you guys keeping score at home by any by any chance? What's that? I wonder if they're keeping score. Score? I and I, you know what the funny thing is? Every after, week, like, everybody who watches board gets board. a home version of the game. You know that. Don't give me that shit. And. What are we on N? We're on N, yeah. You're up for N. And I took over the lead again because we, we paused. Well, I I, 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 there, I don't know there's many N's. I can go with that band or that band. But I see no doubt. And they're a great band. I get to met, uh, meet her. And uh, I thought she was real. And I like people being real. And... Uh, Whoever's watching this show is absolutely real. Uh, I'm a goofball, but I like people. And she was real when I met her. So she like didn't know that. me for mad. I'm like, a, I just remember looking at her. I would like to see an early No Doubt show. Those are probably those were good shows. I'm sure I've seen footage. Yeah, but I met her um, before the show, and it was just I was a dork kid, and she just looked at me and goes, "Yeah, so it, probably older than her." Yeah. We won't get into that, but you probably were older than her. Hey, Phil met Gwen Stefani. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, no and doubt, it's a really good band. I mean, that's underrated material right there. That's that's. I mean, they, they were the. I got a poster downstairs. You. Oh, I just said that Phil got to meet Gwen Stefani when he was younger. Okay. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. Yeah. I love you, Phil. Amy, manager, production manager for sure. <laughs> production manager. Hi, Amy. <laughs> So. No, it wasn't Gwen Stefani. Was That's who it? sings for no doubt. <laughs> That's no, at Bolingbrook at the at the at the bar. That singer for no doubt is Gwen Stefani. So all the famous and person now who's Gwen yeah. Stefani and, for and, and, and her Gwen boyfriend. Stefani. Yeah, I did. Hi, so Amy. You, you met her when you were a kid. That's cool. Yeah, um, I mean, oh, it, it didn't bring it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Think about that for a second. Just for a second, right? You know. Um, oh, more than a second, actually. Or, oh, I'm going to say Olden in the Way, the original Olden in the Way album with Jerry Garcia and Pete Rowan and Dave Grisman and Vassar Clemens. I listened to that record. That was probably my, my why I listen to Bluegrass now is because of Olden in the Way. So what's your o cho your choice for O tonight, Phil? Oh, that's a tough choice because it's a tough letter. Um, an album or a band I've seen, I uh, didn't see Boingo Boingo, I played that quite a bit. I had an album back in the day before the flood when I I was a big record collector before I started painting on them, kind of. Boingo Boingo. I had band. an album back in the day. Um, look it up. Uh, Oingo Boingo, write it down, John. No, I'm, uh, I'm typing it in because I love Oingo Boingo. Well. <laughs> I, was, oh, I was turned on to them as a kid, man. The, the Dead Man's Party. Of course, Word Science. And who do you Weird want? Science, to be yeah. Today? Who do you want to be? Who do you want yeah, to be? A today? lot of good hits. I remember I had the album. Like and someone on it TV. Really, it's like uh, losing something or death. Uh, uh. I mean, that's just awesome, cool guitar. Well, too. Speaking of death, you know, we all have X's and stuff. Uh, uh, I shouldn't even okay, go for that. David Crosby, rest in peace. Um, so you're on P. Let's just skip to P. Uh oh. This could be a tough letter. For P? G. An album you play. Right. Like, um, just because there's too many of them. Um, I'm gonna go with Poi Dog Pondering. Um Band out of Chicago, seen him four, five, six times. Um if you see this band, I, I don't know. You won't. Point out pondering Frank and Oz and the boys, and they always switch up their lineup. 
I would love to see them. I think that I, I'm very intrigued by the one or two songs that I've actually listened to by them. So I've only listened to a couple of their songs. Jackass Ginger. Mm. Jackass Ginger. No, I see. I got to I, I got to delve into that to Poy Dog because that's something I've always. I, I, when they were oh, we, we, Dog, when they came out. Johnny, yep. The um. You will. You know, if if I put it on this. the right now, I'm not sitting down. You will move. Put it on. Put on Jackass Ginger by Poy Dog Potter. Well, we don't want to get pinched. We'll, leave, we'll play it later after the show. We'll have an after party with Poy Dog Pondering. Um, what do you mean after party? We're not, we, we should consider the thought of doing the after party. If anybody who's watching and then they want to ah. join us after we, do, we are not live anymore, they could come in and they could put a little screen up on our screens and we could talk to more people and they could hang out with us. It, it just depends on what people are doing and what they're up to. The, the concept of an after party came up last week. <laughs> it's a because concept. Because of um, the idea of just after we're done, sharing a link and having people come on afterwards who don't want to come on live and be on TV, you know, but they might want to come on and just hang out with us. And then we charge money for that. (laughs) (laughs) So for P, I'm going to have to say the one song I the band that I love that starts with P is the Presidents of the United States of America. And what they've done throughout the years and all their recordings and all their records. There's a lot of there's a lot of music by presidents. If you've heard of Peaches and Kitty and stuff like that, but the the point the the presidents of the United States of America have seven or eight really good albums. Um, really good stuff, you know. See you, Troy. Hey, you guys have fun. Yeah. All right. Jake, good to see you. Thanks for being part of the show. Peculiar Missouri, huh? An album by Willie Carlisle. See, that's maybe that is that one of your that one of those albums? Man. I think we're going to, we're in P. I said presidents. So we're going to go on to Q, but I don't really have a Q, so I'm going to let him come in and, and play that game. Quit, you know, I quit. I can't quit you, baby. By Led Zeppelin, that played a lot, you know, but that's got a Q in it. And um, quit, quit, yeah, quit Q, Quar, Quar. So yeah, there's a lot of songs out there that we can't always think of all of them at the same time. It's amazing how the brain works, one way or another. But but to be able to Think about all the songs we know at all the same time. That's what kind of blows my mind a little bit. So you're up. You're up. You're get Q. I'm just gonna give you Q, and we're gonna skip to the next letter. Well, I have a great poster by uh, the boys from Queensrÿch downstairs. Even though my first album that I ever got was Queen Bohemian Rhapsody by far, but I so I'm gonna go with Queen Bohemian Rhapsody. That changed my life. You can you probably can't album. see it, but that's what I had written down for you. Queen Bohemian. Yep. Yep. That's what I had By been. far. Queen Bohemian Rhapsody, Freddie Mercury, and Death on Two Legs, and um, a huge fan of Queen. Underrated band to this day. So, Queen, when my, I, I can picture when I was, oh, that's another hour story, uh, when I got the album. We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> we had to take on our show, so we're going someplace finally. Um, I gotta go. For R, let's keep going then. Let's keep moving forward. Or I guess R, there's two different ones I got for R. I got something recent, which is the Rack and Tours. Have you ever listened to the Rack and Tours? It's Jack yeah. White's band. It's a, with the, it's a great album. Both the albums are really good from beginning to end. And But the album I played the most with the starts on R is probably the Red Hot Chili Peppers Mother's Milk. I when think I'm. Gonna... What? No, you said R. R like a pirate. Somebody's <laughs> home. That's the neighbor possibly kicking. Get my beer. It's good. Well, you know what I'm talking about. We're at R. I said I said red tours or red chili peppers, but if you'd like to go, you can you can choose an R letter. I can go one and one A. Uh, our influential band, uh, it'd be Rush by far. I've seen them five, six times. And, and when I keep saying that I've seen them, I saw these cats. All the bands I've seen were just these cats. There's no fakes in there. I saw Rush 2112. Blew my mind in high school. In high school, in uh, 1979, I was doing little... Uh, diagrams that rush you know the the famous logo and it's selling them for milk cartons of white milk i never forget that whatever those are whatever those are yeah. i just grow up north 
Um, wow. Yeah, the other band I thought of that I should mention for R has always been R.E.M. for me, too. R.E.M., big... I love R.E.M. from the beginning. But as, as, as S goes, I'm going to let you take over the beginning of S there. Um, we're going to go with... Uh, El May, uh, I'm going to go with band called Sweet. Ballroom Blitz. It's it's the ballroom blitz. It's it's the ballroom I'm, blitz. I'm thinking of elms that I had back in the day when I first getting my elms. You had didn't know wait. You weren't even born then. <laughs> well, I'm gonna pick a uh, Southern Harmony and the Music Companion by Black Crows. You're, you know what I'm talking about twice. No, that's not twice hard. That's that's the first album. That's too hard to handle. But... But Southern Harmony, the musical companion, I listened to that album a lot. That was a tape that I had in my car when I traveled to Arizona the first time, and I had like eight tapes in my car. And so it got played more than most tapes. Lenny Kravitz, Let Love Rule was in there. Um, Southern Harmony, there were some tapes of my old band when I grew up, when I was a kid. Um, but that tape got played a lot. So, T. T. Keep us moving um, along. This is the train keeps it rolling right here. Yeah, train keeps it rolling all night long. I just look at, um, I'm looking to, at uh, my room right now. I see my mom painting from you and other artists. It's pretty eclectic. And uh, I'm, I'm stuck in a zone of uh, listening to certain music. But uh, what letter are we on, T? Sure. Um, would I listen to... An album version was Ted Nugent and uh, Catch Cratch Fever, uh, Stranglehold. I do believe don't. There's no politics involved, but I do believe I listen to that a lot. And if you look at the cover, he was into it. Get rid of politics, and Ted Nugent was one on one. Yeah, a lot of excitement there for sure. A lot of excitement. T for me, I had ten by Pearl Jam. Is my pick probably an album I listened to too much for a while. For I didn't like it at first. I just disliked Ten when it first came out. I was mad at it because it got too famous too fast, and I was in that mode where stuff couldn't get famous too fast. And Ten got really popular, so I stopped listening to it for a while. But when I went back to it, that's Even Flow and Jeremy and and um, all those great the, the the great beginnings of Pearl Jam. Um, I listened to that one a lot. Got yeah. You still into this? This is going on forever. Jeez, I thought this would be over by now. What, what letter am I on? Let's go to you. You. Um, one of my favorite bands back in the day. I got to see him, Michael Rudolph and uh, UFO. You're right, dude. No, UFO. I got to see him at Aragon and Lights Out. Lights Out in London. I love European bands and UFO. Yeah. All right, all right, UFO. I'm gonna skip right to V and say the Violet Femmes, Violet Femmes, first album. That album got played a lot from the time I was 12 till I was now. Still gets played. Um, the Violet Femmes album everybody knows, you know, all the songs everybody knows. That played a lot. So V, you got a V? V is that? What the hell? Oh, I seen the Violet Femmes, but I was. Two buzz to see the Violent Times in Madison, Wisconsin. When I went to my buddy's college after I graduated high school, he went to Madison, Wisconsin. We went and saw the Talking Heads and the Violent Times, <laughs> and we went to Kegger Party. And I didn't get to see anything because I thought it was, and we drank too many beers, and I didn't see the show. But I you missed those two bands together. What? Was it the same show? Was that the same show, Talking Heads and Violent Times? hundred percent. Look it up. Uh. In Madtown in 1980? Wow. Wow. That had been a hell of a night for music right there. Right in the beginning of all of it. And they were still just peeking just in their... their I was... Youth. I got to make sure my uh, stories are straight. Yeah. You realize, was, like, you have a dog behind you, and I also have a dog behind me. You know, Chester's sitting there. Yeah, it's Gooby. Uh, get up right there, give, yeah. him a give him a pet. Um, for W, I actually got the Wallflowers, Bringing Down the Horse. This is Jacob Dylan, is Bob Dylan's son's band. And um, just a really good album. Three Marlenas, One Headlight. 
And they played a lot on the radio. They played one headlight way, way too much on the radio. So yeah, they got one hit. I had to come back to them and listen to them, but that album is really good. And then give it up to, um, the what's he called? Uh, I can't remember the name of the song now. It's really good, though. I'll think of it in a second when I look it up. <laughs> but yeah, I got the Wallflowers, Bringing Down the Horse for W. You All right. Know, probably the, I've heard yeah. them. I've been listening to them a lot. W is the most... Uh, the Who. The Who. Um... It was four cats, Roger Daltrey, Peter Townsend, Keith Moon, John Entwistle. The Who. On Real Rock and Roll. I like, I'm old school. Four dudes. There's not a bunch of technology. They rolled, they rocked. The Who. Yeah, I give it up The Who. Give it The Who. Um, for sure, The Who is really good. Still playing shows. It just played just played recently somewhere around here. Yeah, what? Yeah, um, but I don't remember where it was. Is uh, Keith there? Is uh, it's very it's it's half band. You know, it's it's Daltrey and you know. But, I'm not gonna. You can give me a free ticket. I ain't going. I don't know. I'd, I'd go. I'd go. I'd go to that. No, I'm just. I don't like that. No. For for X, I have XTC, and the album is Skylarking. Because they had a bunch of good albums, but Skylarking is the one that caught on to me, and it had the song Dear God on it, and, the, and it wasn't the, and the other one I really like is um, Blood and Limes, I think, or something like that. It's got uh, what, Making Plans for Nigel. XTC, good band. You're making plans for Nigel. Nigel. Uh, I love XTC, John. A big time fan. Big time fan. Um, he was a... Uh, excuse me. Oh, that was good burp. <laughs> You laughed, so people <laughs> thought Paul. Oh, I'm just you may you remind me of Harry Carey for just a minute there. <laughs> no, actually, he's one of my favorites. Not to get to see him live. Actually, I did it a benefit for Marianne Faithful with uh, Billy Corrigan and Robin Zander um, at the Metro, and and uh, he doesn't like. He likes playing to the back of the crowd. So, yeah. If you saw a video, I don't know. XTC, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy Mead asked a question if, if Dear God, that's the, it's called Dear God. It's a song by XTC. Yep. That's what you're thinking about, yep. yep. Oh, my dad's chiming in right now before we finish. His favorite, most albums played by my dad Steely Dan, Reeling in the Years, yep. America, yeah. Horse with No Names, yep. You got it, Pops. Eagles on the border. Oh man. Oh yeah. Those are that's my childhood right there. But yeah, well yeah. Your dad sat and listened to that song "Horse with No Name," and I thought about like being in the desert on a horse, no name, and we got no name because there ain't no rain and there's nobody to give you no pain. What a song, man! I have three different stereos going on. One mellowly here, right in front of me. (laughs) One in the bedroom, and then one cranking downstairs with Laura. So I have three different radio stations. (laughs) <laughs> so two of marks are T and one's <laughs> what letter am I we're going to go to Y now I think we're going to go to Y Y it's it's very simple for that one it's yes yes okay. I've seen them um, two nights in a row twice if you're seeing yes at Milwaukee and in, uh, in Chicago Stadium in the round before the round was, I saw yes two nights with my cousin, and two nights in Chicago, and then uh, yes Ian Anderson, Chris Squire, B- Bill Bruford, Danny Watkins, Rick Wakeman, um, Daniel Watkins they, just said hello. We just wanted to check in. Good to see him. Yes, out there. it's not even close. I mean, bands can't even copy that now. You have to have the ambiance and what you're doing. Yes, did it? Rush did it? Why do bands not get it? Yes, by far. We're definitely uh, I, we're, we're showing our age. So I'm going to say Yonder Mountain String Band, Mountain Tracks Part Two, original Jeff Austin Yonder Mountain String Band, an album I played a lot. I, play, I still play a lot. And a lot of these albums are still albums that are still in the rotation. They're my favorite selected songs. You know, you listen to it. We're going to have a live sh- live show coming up where we just listen to a Spotify playlist. Um, they do that now. They do that. You make a, a playlist on Spotify, and they have a venue, and everybody pays to get in and listen to Beyonce's Spotify playlist together. Um, it'd be fun to build one to to do a, a playlist party, but I don't. Th- this is sucks for bands. It sucks for musicians who've learned the music and are so good at it, and they just have the band come play. Anyway, 
Oh, she... we're, we're a Z. Thank goodness. Well, <laughs> it's an hour long not. that game. <laughs> Which album would you pick, though? I, again, that's not an album. I, I'm in the ZZ Top. Here's another half hour segment. You're in the um, ZZ Top fan club. You get to go backstage almost every show. You've met those guys so many times. Yeah, I bet it is, Dan. They did Mountain Tracks. Well, three. you can't yeah. shake their hand. They do drink Jack. D- I got to watch who I'm talking to because it is public. You can't. They do. And I get to party with Black Crows because they're the backup band. I saw the last set before with Black Crows as the back. I go backstage. I'm like, no, this is an easy question, though. What album did you play the most? Um, What would I play the most? Um, Elson Shane unplugged. I was referring back to ZZ Top. I was gonna actually say I, I listened to Eliminator. Oh, um, ZZ Top. There was never an album because Fandango. Fandango is the one that, that ended up being the most classic. But I was thinking Eliminator with with Sharp Dress. No, Man. you see, and, you're too young for that. I'm, I know. I'm young. I'm telling you my age. No. Off, dude. That car and the girls with the legs. No. <laughs> and the, the keychain that would always fall at the end of the video. You're too young, John. That was when I. Came along for ZZ Top, so that the, I went back and listened to Fandango and and all the all the that, good stuff. The the Trace, uh, tra- what's it called? Trace Amigos or Trace? Uh, Jesus, just Trace Hombres. Chicago. Trace Hombres. Bloody I listened water to into wine. That's way before. But, Fandango. Like, but when I was a kid, though, and then they they played those the ZZ Top album Eliminator for us, you know, and, and that's what was on MTV. We saw that's how it's we saw up. ZZ Top. Okay, the spinning guitars, the beards, all of it, you know. And it was until later in life, whenever somebody introduced me to a couple other ZZ Top songs, that I had to go listen to those other albums, and I liked them just as good as that album. I wish I would have heard them at the same time, you know, but we just didn't, we weren't really going to frequent the ZZ Top, I guess, so much as the past Eliminator. Because even the next album, which was the Something Else Aider or something, it was, it really went downhill, you know. So, but I, I ZZ Top's a great band. I would, I, would, I would still go see them. They're still doing shows. Now, how do you feel about that? Cause they're still doing shows. No, he's gone. It's not working. I ain't gone. There's always going to be ZZ Top fans though that want to go see the ZZ Top show. They never this got great song. We should all dance. I don't care if we kicked off. <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll have to mute him in a second, folks. He took the yeah. stereo downstairs. He turned on a, to to the show week 142 of the Phil and John Zone Thursday, January 19th. Um, five months till I'm 50 years old, folks, from today. It's pretty trippy to think about that. But um, telling stories about music tonight and talking about the music that we love. That's more what we was supposed to start about uh, that we're two artists, but we really just like music so much. That's what made us artists. That's what made us who we are. And um, so that was the whole ABC list. for. Cause I picked ZZ Top 2. I picked Fandango, but I was going to have to say Eliminator whenever it came up because I realized that's the album we listened to way. I think Dad had a tape. There was a cassette in the car of Eliminator, so we um we played that one an awful lot, an awful lot. So... No regrets. So the music I got to listen to growing up, hell, I listened to Madonna and Michael Jackson, and uh, hell, I probably listened to George Michael for a minute. Culture Club, I was never too shy on, but I now I go back, I like them more. I like the the Soundgarden to the to the Beastie Boys to Duke Ellington to my great great grandfather to whoever knows who ever played a song for anyone anywhere in time. Tonight, my favorite is Jake Nobby, though. I'm gonna um, th- throw it out to him one last time before we go because Jake did a really good job on the show again writing those songs is really good the two songs that have been on our shows exclusively and I've seen them is this bronze colored camel song and then she's the one I like the best I think he premiered that song on our show I think that was the first night that he talks about this uh, John Prine painting that they bought off of me a while back and um, so it's kind of cool to have that connection to the folks that are out there listening to music and putting music out We'll wait for Phil to come back. Maybe we'll give him a minute of sports. If you think we should give him a minute of sports, folks, I think he'd probably really like that. Um, I'll get it ready for him for when he comes back. Uh, Phil's my, my good friends here, Phil, when we met doing artwork, and here we are traveling. Not really traveling. We're space traveling. We're going out to space and then back to your phones and your TVs and stuff. Hey, Tammy, how are you doing out there? That's my mom there, Tammy. Great out there saying hi. Good to see you. Danny Rock- Rockins, good to see you on the show tonight. Um, really, I appreciate everybody tuning in, checking it out, and seeing what we do. And um, I don't know. I don't know what we do. I don't know what we're gonna do. It's, it's it's not Friday night though. It's Thursday night, so we probably ought to. Where are you at, Phil? He went and took an actual I'm break. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm back. 
Okay, well, I think you should talk about sports for a minute before we go, because we got to do all our segments. All right. Um, sports segment. I finished. Uh, Bears got the number one pick in the draft. I think they're going to probably trade down. I don't know about Justin Fields. The Bears, uh, they're going to go to Arlington Heights. They're going to get a big dome. I mean, it's like five years down the line. Um, what are they doing with Chicago? What are they going to do with Bulls, Bulls, The Bills are playing in France tonight. Yoki Noah is playing in a tennis court that his dad was famous for, Yoki Noah in tennis. Uh, Tom Dean, if you're watching the show, you like tennis. Uh, good luck. Tom Dean you. is still watching the show. He's got a lot of patience. Hey, Tom. Uh, <laughs> he was uh, watching uh, first. I hit a stereo. I had two stereos. I have no stereos. She took them all downstairs, so I have nothing. I'm going to go, um, I'm cooking right now. I'm going to make uh, my carne asada. I got all these bones and make stuff for tomorrow for the party. And I'm going to watch a good movie and chillax. Right, Chester Bears? And the sports segment is brought to you by the Phil and John Zone Show. Love you, John. Love the Phil and John Zone. And uh, signing off. <laughs> It's 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 the Phil and John zone. We can do whatever we want. That's always gonna be my favorite part of the show for I'm going to uh, the other side of the Phil and John zone. Thank you for coming on the show. Much love, peace. Thanks everybody for tuning in tonight. Phil and John zone brought to you by Phil and John. Outro music. Um, proud to have our friend. Uh, theme song by Cody Dekoff. Out, out theme song by Oliver Stack. Um, thanks, Jake Nobby, for coming on the show. Check out Jake Nobby on Facebook and YouTube. Go listen to some kick ass music. Have fun with your friends. Make sure that you're doing it well. Anything else you want to tell them, Phil? Yeah. Um, did I miss all my friends that I uh, was watching? I really miss you all. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you, John. And thank you for watching the show. And have a happy Thursday. Do whatever you do want to do. Brought to you by Phil and John. That's me and that's John. That's a hit. No, it's, it's a hit. Yeah. Thank you. Woohoo. Come out there. Let's go get them. Go get them. Yeah.